Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I've got a pretty exciting one for you guys. Um, if you saw the last video I posted, I put up a quick preview of what we're going to be creating today. Um, I think this is a really neat effect and once again there is a lot to be learned here and hopefully you guys can apply some of these tips and uh, techniques and concepts to your own projects and make some really neat stuff. Uh, but if you didn't see the last video, here's kind of a rough overview of what we're going to be creating. So we've got all these different polygons that are kind of, you know, wiggling around and moving in an organic way. Um, it's kind of an interesting effect. It's not super spectacular by any means, but once again, the main goal here with this tutorial is to learn some new, uh, new tools, new techniques that you can apply to your projects. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up Cinema 4D and we'll, we'll start fresh. First things first, I do want to say that this this uh, animation is created with a Python script. Um, I will provide a link down in the description to where you guys can go download that. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Simon Holmetal, who is a graphics designer for Man vs. Machine. If you guys haven't seen some of their work, I recommend you go check it out. But he is the one that created this script, so I don't take any credit for creating the script. However, I'm just going to show you guys how to use it. Uh, what it's used for and then let you guys play around and see what you can come up with so with all of that covered let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial so the very first thing we want to do here is grab a primitive object um, in my experiences you can grab just about anything you want um, I'm gonna kind of kind of stick to what I did in the tutorial preview so for that I started off with a platonic and essentially what we're going to do is go up to display and uh, turn on garage shading with lines. And this is going to allow us to see our, our uh, geometry and our segments. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to model a polygon. We can make it look any way we want it to, which is awesome. And then we're going to take that one polygon and we are going to apply it. If I click on the platonic here and give ourselves, uh, you know, we give ourselves instead of one segment, two segments, you're going to see more triangles. It's going to apply that geometry to every single polygon. So we can create some really interesting looking designs that can be used for a multitude of things. Um, animations, stills, all kinds of different stuff. You name it, um, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. So that's what's really cool about it. So like I said, we're going to grab a primitive object. I'm going to use a platonic for this tutorial demonstration. And with the platonic selected, I'm going to divide this into just two segments. Now you can go pretty much as high as you want here. You can go three, four, whatever you want, but do be careful. Don't go too high or it's going to be very taxing on your system to keep things simple. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to leave it at two. And once we're satisfied with the amount of segments that we have, we're just going to press C on the keyboard to make this object editable. Okay. And with the object editable, we're going to go to the polygon mode. We're going to press Control or Command A on our keyboard, and that's going to highlight every single polygon for us, just like so. Okay, now with everything highlighted, we're going to go up to the Mesh icon, go to Commands, and then click on this little gear icon next to Disconnect. And we're going to make sure that Preserve Groups is checked off. And once that's checked off, we'll go ahead and press OK. And what this is going to do is basically divide all these polygons up into individual polygons. So now Cinema 4D won't look at each one of these as a, an entire object. So if we click on one using our live selection tool and we just drag it out, you'll see it completely disconnects from the rest of the object, which is exactly what we want. Now, if this isn't working for you guys, pay attention to this axis modification tool. I've noticed a lot of the times when I do that, that gets enabled automatically. And if that's enabled and you try to pull this polygon out, you're not, nothing's going to happen. So be mindful of that because you're you're modifying the axis rather than the object. Just something to make note of. So with that taken care of, we can go ahead and just double click our little stop lights here and make this object invisible for the time being because we don't really need to be seeing it. The next step that we're going to be doing is going up here to the primitive object icon and uh, grabbing a simple polygon. And this is going to be the geometry that we model and that we then end up projecting onto the platonic here that we started off with. So let's go ahead and grab that polygon and I'm going to go ahead and make it a triangle uh, for tutorial purposes and we can leave it at one segment that's that's okay and what I'm going to do is press 
C on the keyboard to make this polygon um, in an editable state so we can actually grab the face and modify it and while we're doing that let's go ahead and select polygon and press alt G on our keyboard and that's going to automatically throw that object into a null uh, which is what we need and then we'll grab the polygon again hold down command or control click and drag down and that's going to create polygon dot one which is what we need for this to work so the first polygon we can go ahead and hide as we don't need to see that and the second one polygon dot one the one we just duplicated we're going to model and make something out of this simple polygon so to begin doing that um, we can just grab a face for example using our live selection tool make sure we're in polygon mode and we can hold down command or control on the keyboard and then click and drag upwards to make this object uh, three-dimensional and really at this point you guys can can do whatever you want here you can um, I'm going to do right click and click extrude enter and then just click and drag this in and then I'm going to right click and hit extrude again and we're just going to drag this in just like that and this is what's fun about this is you can get creative as creative as you want so we can do you know another extrude in and then drop it down just like so extrude enter again and then we can completely just press D on our keyboard to delete the uh, the center polygon there just like that and basically what we're creating is what's going to be projected onto the platonic so this is what every little polygon is going to look like so yeah you can have a lot of fun with this you can get pretty creative pretty easily so because this is a tutorial I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this just as long as the vast majority uh, gets what I'm trying to do here and what I'm trying to accomplish that's all that's all that matters to me um, right now I just hit MK on the keyboard to get the um, uh, knife tool and I'm gonna click there and create something kinda strange and different and I'm gonna go up to select go to ring selection and just gonna click and select that whole little section there and press the delete key so I've actually never done this before I'm kinda curious to see how it will turn out but um, yeah so that's let's, let's say that's gonna be my uh, polygon for the object and I'll call that good when we have our geometry model just like so to however we want it to look when we're done with that the next step is to go up here and grab a surface deformer now you may have been wondering what this ob what the purpose of this object is well the purpose of this object is to reference so we want to uh, we want this polygon to reference this polygon if that makes sense so click on our surface and we're gonna reference this we're just gonna click and drag and drop the polygon into the surface box here and then just press initialize just like so all right and so at this point we can go ahead and just turn off our surface here just like so and what we're going to do now is go up to MoGraph uh, go to cloner and we're going to take this cloner and we're going to change the mode to object here and we are going to take the entire null here and throw it in the cloner just make it a child of the cloner just like so all right and we're going to go ahead and take the um, object the platonic sorry about that and make that the main object here and then we're going to change the distribution from vertex to polygon center just like so so right now this isn't really what we what we want necessarily I mean I guess you could create something pretty cool um, possibly uh, leaving it like this but for this tutorial I'm gonna want to scale this up and out because uh, we really don't want the geometry intersecting um, as bad as it was so we'll do something like that and we will call that good um, it doesn't have to be be perfect we can fine-tune it uh, later down the road so we'll call that good all right so once we have all of that out of the way what we can do is select the cloner and press C on our keyboard to make every single object editable and you're gonna you're gonna see every single clone now becomes its own null which is what we need for this script to work at this point what we can do is right click and for me I have this saved 
Um, down here, if I right click, go to load tag preset, user.lib4d tags um, polymorph. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna pop up and tell me I need to pick a target object. I'm gonna press OK, and that tells us that our script, our Python script, is now uh, in our um, project. And here is the script itself, uh, right here. So it's it's pretty short. It's not super long, but in order to get the script to work, it needs a reference object, a tar target object. So our target object in this case is the platonic. So we'll click and drag that in there, and we'll make sure we hide the source object just like that. And when we click that on, look what we have. And if I turn off my lines, you might be able to see this a little bit better. Now, this is going to be the, the render, essentially. This is it. And uh, if I go ahead and give this a uh, render preview, you'll kind of see what we have. So what it did was it took our model geometry and it applied it to all the the segments, basically, of our original platonic. So the, the, uh, the effect and the outcome is actually really, really, really cool. And if you set this up with uh, lighting and camera movements, you know, um, you can really make something really spectacular, and, and that's really cool. And it's all being driven by this script here. Uh, additionally, you have all these other options. So uh, I'm not going to go into each and every single one of them and explain what they do, but you can kind of see for yourself. Um, so yeah, just it's up to you guys. Just play around and see what you see what you come up with. Um, you can create some really really neat things. Yeah, that's that. So let's talk about deformers, um, which will kind of explain how I got that one that one effect. So um, to do that, we'll grab a deformer and um, let's grab formula for example. Formula is pretty cool, and we'll drag and drop and make that a child of our original object. And if I press play here, you'll see it's already deforming all the different polygons. And I'm going to increase the amount of time on our timeline here and we can see that in real time how our geometry is being affected. Now within this deformer, of course we can change the size, we can uh, change the, the effects, so every effect is going to give us a slightly different look. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and try a cylindrical and just see what that looks like. So yeah, it's up to you guys. Um, if you actually know all these different formulas, uh, you can put in your own formulas there, change these values around. So if I increase that number, um, you're gonna notice a completely different effect. This is a lot more exaggerated now. Um, let's change this value and see what happens. So now this is completely crazy. So now at this point, we could throw in a light, um, turn on shadows, get our lighting set up, turn on ambient occlusion. Now I'm just rushing through this at this point, so yeah, it's not gonna look that great, but um, yeah, guys, get creative. Uh, that's the main point of this tutorial, is to teach you the tools and then let you guys get after it and create something spectacular so I think right now that will cover this tutorial um, I'm not gonna go in how to add a Python script it's it's very simple it's very easy to do that and uh, yeah if you guys have any questions comments or concerns leave those down below and uh, I think that'll do it for this tutorial if you guys liked it give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys soon peace out